Hi guys and welcome back to another TechMinds video and welcome to another new radio. Now this is the VGC N7600 and it has some improvements over its predecessor, the N7500. The first two features that pop out to me on the box is the AI noise reduction and the KISS TNC. Now the KISS TNC feature actually really sells it for me and I'll show you why later in the video. Now the N7600 is specified as a dual band VHF and UHF transceiver with 50 watts out on both bands. Of course, we'll be testing that later in the video. You get the usual accessories in the box like manuals, brackets and power cables and of course the radio and the microphone. Now if you've never seen one of these types of radios before, then let me inform you that this radio can be completely controlled via an app on your phone or tablet. The connections on the main radio itself are actually quite limited, with just a microphone socket on the front, a USB power socket also on the front, which is alongside a few status LEDs. On the rear of this chunky heatsink chassis, you'll find an SO239 socket for the antenna. There's also a 3.5 millimeter socket for a speaker. The N7500 was completely app controlled as standard, but with the N7600, we get this new style microphone, which actually has a screen on it. This means we can use and program the radio without an app running on a nearby device. However, the app does add more features and value to the user experience of this N7600. Now the microphone does actually feel a bit chunky. It's not exactly on the small side, and that of course is because of the screen and the buttons on all the sides. There's even a little toggle switch on the top of the mic with two shoulder buttons, which are actually used to change the output volume. Now the microphone does connect to the front of the main radio like this, but you actually can get away with using this radio without a microphone. And that's because the app that I'll show you later, specifically the Android version, allows you to talk through the app to the radio. Now I'm not going to go into every single detail here, and that's purely because this video will be long enough as it is, but there's a whole load of features that you can change or add within the menu, which you can access directly on the microphone. Now even though there's quite a few options within the menu, I did find learning this radio was actually relatively easy, once you got your head around the menu. Now I do always like to see black background displays with bright colored text. I think it looks so much better and in my opinion, it's easier to read. Now under the connections menu, you'll find a pairing option. Now this needs to be activated for the first time so that you can connect your mobile device via Bluetooth. AI noise reduction is also activated within the main radio settings menu too. So just remember where that is. Now the N7600 does have a built-in GPS receiver and with the radio indoors, it managed the GPS lock fairly quickly. The GPS is used for its built-in APRS features, which can be configured directly on the radio itself via the microphone. Of course, using the companion application on the mobile device does actually make things easier. So let's just take a look at that now. Now what you're looking at here is the HT app running on an Android tablet. You can also get an iOS version. However, I think the Android version actually has more features right now. The app will show a map, which will show APRS stations if they're configured. You can either receive these via APRS packets via RF, or if your device is connected to the internet, the app will auto-populate after connecting to the APRS IS servers. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this app connects to the N7600 over Bluetooth, and that's audio and serial data at the same time. If you press the little three line button on the top left, a side panel will be shown where you can change some immediate settings. The N7600 can store up to 32 channels per memory group, of which you have six. Tapping on one of the channels will change the radio's frequency. And to edit or add a channel, simply hold your finger on the channel memory that you wish to edit. You'll then be presented with a new screen where you can change the channel name, transmit and receive frequencies, and then set things like CTCSS tones. 
And when I held my finger on one of the buttons, a pop-up was shown where you can edit, delete, or bind network channel to this button. Now this app has the ability to connect to a VoIP server. I believe it's VGC's own version of the network radio. Now you do have to register and once logged in, you can add friends and create new channels. By binding a network channel to an RF channel means that any network activity that's received will be transmitted over RF of the selected channel. Of course, anything that's received on that channel over RF will also be routed to the network channel via the application. Other quick features on this menu consist of changing power levels from low to medium to high, and you can also enable or disable dual channel mode, which when enabled will set the radio to monitor two channels or frequencies at the same time. Another feature of the application is the ability to change the radio settings. Once you're familiar with the app layout and where settings are located, it's actually quicker to use the app than to go through the microphone to make the changes. Now under the APRS menu, we can set certain features on or off. For example, if the radio was tuned to an APRS frequency, here in the UK it's 144.800, you can enable or disable the eye gate feature. Now this is where any received packets via RF can be sent automatically to the APRS IS servers via the application. You can also set internet to radio option so any received messages on the network can be then relayed or transmitted out over RF from your N7600. Now, as mentioned earlier, Bluetooth connectivity provides data and audio. So if you have the audio option enabled, you can listen to the radio through your device's speaker and you can press the PTT button on the screen to talk into your Android device and then your voice will be transmitted over the N7600, essentially turning your device into a speaker microphone. 2E0 KVC. Yeah, I think we have seen some of them out on the uh, uh, TV before. Yeah, I can, I can sort of picture what a uh, uh, presenter looks like with a dark sort of uh, longer hair and everything. And uh, Yeah. Um... Now on this Android version of the application, there is a messages page we can set it to receive all communications in and out. You can also go back to this page and play those recorded transmissions, whether they are APRS packets or actual voice transmissions. Now when receiving via the app, the selected channel is shown on the top left. You also get provided two bar graphs as well as the frequency and channel name. The bar graphs show signal strength and audio levels. OK, so let's talk about this KISS TNC. What is it and what can we do with it? Now, for me, I was particularly interested to see if I can connect to the N7600 using my Windows computer over Bluetooth and then see if I can use the KISS TNC client application to access my local BBS. So the KISS TNC is not specifically for APRS. It can be used with your computer and a KISS terminal application. Now, once you're connected to your radio via Bluetooth, you should be able to see Bluetooth COM port appear. Using an application here called KISS Set, I can now tell it to use the Bluetooth serial port. With the radio set to a frequency of my local packet node, I can send the connect command to see if it actually will connect. And yet, I'm now connected to GB7MNK over Bluetooth via the N7600. Now remember, for this to work, you need to disconnect the app from the radio so that the Bluetooth connection to your computer is actually possible. If you've not used this KISS TNC application before, it's actually multi-platform, not just Windows. I'll leave it all linked below. Now, once connected to the node, I'm presented with a few options. Depending on what the system operator has set up, you most likely find options for chat, which is essentially a chat room where you can type messages to each other in real time. There's also a BBS, which is actually a bulletin board full of messages. Of course, while you're sending and receiving messages, the N7600 will automatically receive and transmit those packets for you. It's all controlled over Bluetooth. Accessing the BBS will allow me to take a look and read any messages that have been posted on the BBS. Now here I found an article on how to construct a 4 meter 
5 8 wave vertical antenna. Now just remember that there's no internet used here whatsoever to download this message from the BBS to the computer. It's all done over RF. Now it's not exactly the fastest way of communicating, we are talking around 1200 board, but it does work. And these types of packet nodes have been around for many years. They were the source of ham information way before the internet was a thing. Now for me, this is an awesome feature and it's built directly into the radio's firmware. So if you've ever wanted to play around with packet radio on VHF or UHF, then the N7600 pretty much has you covered right out of the box. Okay, so let's perform some performance tests. First, let's check the power output on the 70 centimeter band. And according to my nice eye power meter of 435 megahertz, it outputs around 53 watts. Now on the two meter band, we see an output of around 60 watts. Now that's actually quite impressive. Normally we see less of an output compared to the radio specification, but this radio appears to outperform the rated specs. So now let's check the spurious emissions to see if VGC care about their products and their users. Well, this is the result for the two meter band. This is showing that the second and third harmonics are more than 47 dB lower than that fundamental. So that's a great start. So let's check the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz. Again, we just seeing one harmonic here. That's the second harmonic that's greater than minus 75 dB noise floor of the tiny SA. And this reads at minus 44 dB from that fundamental. Now this is exactly what we like to see. This tells me so much information, not only about the product itself, but about VGC as a company and their engineers capabilities. Now one of the other selling points of the N7600 was the inclusion of AI noise reduction. At the time of making this video, I could only see to enable this on the radio itself. The option was not available in the actual application. Now the manual also states that when enabled, it activates for receive and transmit. There's also a statement which says to turn off AINR if the signals are weak, as this can cause fragmented audio. So it appears that AINR will work with strong signals only, but remove noise like wind or environmental sounds. So let's just put that to the test with a weak signal coming from a distant repeater. Now, as the AI NR is supposed to help with transmit audio as well, let's do a transmit audio test. This is uh, M0DQW testing audio on the N7600 with a fan right next to the microphone and AI NR turned off. This is uh, M0DQW testing audio with a fan next to the microphone and AI NR turned off. This is uh, M0DQW testing the audio on the N7600. This is with AI NR turned on and I am and I have the microphone right next to the fan to see if it can get rid of the fan noise. This is uh, M0 DQW testing. AI NR turned on with a fan next to the microphone. M0 DQW testing. One, two, three, four, five, over. Now, did you notice when I was pretty much saying one word at a time with the AI NR turned on, there was literally silence when I was not talking, almost like an audio gate feature that we'd find on audio processing. I think it also doled out the noise of the fan that I had running in the background. Now, personally, I think it's not quite there yet and it needs to be improved, especially on receive. I think we would only ever want to enable noise reduction when receiving weak signals. And as you could tell from the examples there, it was not very good with weak signals. And well, to give VGC credit, they did actually state that in the manual. 
Now, in summary, this is actually a strange radio. I just don't know where I would place this radio in my lineup or any radio lineup. It's mobile size for sure. It has great high power output and great spurious emissions. The features that are available with the companion application provide a lot to tinker with, but are these features that we would use on a daily basis? Now, everyone's use case will be different, so let me know down in the comments what features you like best about this radio, and of course, which features you like the least. Now, for me personally, the KISS TNC is a win win feature, and the N7600 will now be a permanent setup on my Shack desk for when I want to experiment with packet radio. It saves digging out the old TNC and trying to hook it up. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think about this down in the comments. I'll leave a load of links down below to all the relevant gubbings and information that you may want to digest. Anyway, until the next video, thanks to my patrons, my YouTube members, my subscribers, and everyone that watches my videos. It's very much appreciated. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.